In this session, I will introduce the BS Genome Package, which is a package for dealing with representing full genomes in Bioconductor. Genomes in Bioconductor have a very specific naming scheme that's rather long. Uh, it's always useful to get an idea of what genomes are directly available from Bioconductor. And you, use that, and you get that with the available.genomes function, which lists all the genomes you can download directly from the Bioconductor website. You can make genome packages yourself. It's not that difficult, but of course, it's much more convenient of getting to get something from the Bioconductor website. We see here we have different species. We have different sources. If you look on the humans, H. sapiens, there's both a genome from NCBI and there's a genome from UCSC. There's something called masked, there's something that are non masked, and there's different genome versions. So there's a wealth of opportunities here. So to illustrate uh, further on, we're going to take a specific uh, yeast genome and look at that because the yeast genome is not that big. And uh, so our, our things, our commands are going to get executed relatively quickly. When you uh, load a genome package, you get an object back that's the name of the species. In this case, say a VCA. This is a short name of the genome object. So we printed, we can see in this case here, uh, Bioconductor got the genome from UCSC, and we can see some release date, and we can see the name of the different uh, sequences or chromosomes or contexts uh, that are present in this species or in this version of the genome. We can get the names with the seek names, and we can get their lengths with seek lengths, as we know it from G ranges. So it's important to understand that at this point in time, nothing has been loaded into memory. Uh, the BS genome allows for efficient representation of genomes and allows for loading and unloading of big character vectors on the fly. That's Pretty nice because otherwise, when you compute on, say, the human genome, you very quickly uh, use up a lot of memory. So let's access a given uh, chromosome here. We use that with the uh, dollar operator uh, or the single bracket operator, like we know from this. And now we have loaded in that specific uh, chromosome into memory. There's 230,000 letters uh, and it's a DNA string. Now we can call standard functions on this long string. For example, we can compute the GC content of the genome. Uh, this just gives us a number of nucleotides, GSC nucleotides. If you want it as a percentage, we can use s.prop equal true. And we know and we see that the yeast genome on this particular chromosome has a GC content of around 40%. So now it seems very natural in order to compute the GC content of the entire genome that you take this function and you apply it to each genome. Now, you can do this using an L-apply, but the way to do this using genome, uh, genome objects is using a new type of, a of apply called BS-apply. BS-apply has a slightly different interface compared to the standard apply set of functions, and that's because behind the scenes when you run BS-apply, it'll load and unload the different genomes as we need them. So this is a very fancy. We, we start off by running a BS apply by setting up something called a BS params. And BS params is a small little object that really contains the function we're gonna apply and the object we're gonna apply to. This seems very weird when you see it the first time, but it's a paradigm that's begun to be introduced in uh, bioconductor packages. For example, the BioC parallel for doing parallel uh, processing on bioconductor packages uh, uses this paradigm quite a bit. Now, it makes a lot more sense when you see it in practice. You set up a new BS params uh, object, and inside there's an X, which is uh, what object are we going to apply to? So that's not in brackets, it's the VCA, and the function is going to be letter frequency. Now, we use uh, this inside BS apply by just running BS apply 
on the params. And now remember for letter frequency, we need to give it which nucleotides that we're gonna uh, count. This is a, an additional argument to the function and we just put that inside the BS apply call. And back we get the number of, nu of GC nucleotides in the different chromosomes. It's a little hard to see because we get a list back. So let's unlist it. And here we have it. Now we're almost there. In order to uh, fully get the GC content across the entire genome, um, we uh, sum up all of the GC nucleotides and we divide by the sum of the lengths of the chromosomes. So here we have it, the GC content of the yeast genome is uh, 38%. Now, let's uh, check a little bit with the GC content of the individual chromosomes. So we could use s.prop equal true to uh, get it as a percentage. And scanning over this list here, we see that there's almost no difference from chromosome to chromosome, except the mitochondrial chromosome that has a much smaller GC content. This introduced uh, uh, BS genome objects and the BS apply function.